Fresh. Hair flip. Yeah, I'm a better bitch. Fresh. I'm a lot of Hair flip. Fresh. Yeah. Fresh. Oh my God. Fresh. Fresh. So you guys should be happy. Oh my goodness. Hair flip. Hair flip. Hair flip. On Hello everyone and welcome back to your boy The Sean Davey Way Show Make sure you hit that like and subscribe on the way in Tap that bell so you can be notified of all of our future content I bring you another surviving Diddy and Jay-Z A retired bodyguard from the 90s on has come forward and stated some shocking allegations about P. Diddy and Jay-Z. Beyonce and Blue Ivy have now joined the list of the people that Uncle Ron has stated that he will be exposing. Now it is official that Uncle Ron is an ex-bodyguard and not only that, he had his own company and he did work for the likes of P. Diddy and Sean Carter, AKA Jay-Z. Currently, Uncle Ron is under investigation for things that he has brought to the forefront with alleged proof and receipts that he's working with the FBI to take down not only P. Diddy, but Jay-Z as well. Uncle Ron, along with Gene Dill, have been speaking for years about what has transpired. But as of recently, Uncle Ron has been very vocal, if you will, about what's been happening and what has happened. Without holding you any further, let's get into official Uncle Ron exposing Jay-Z, P. Diddy, and Beyonce. Jay-Z and Puffy wanted Biggie killed. Bottom line. You don't have to believe me. Believe the facts. Here's a man that wanted to leave Bad Boy. He wanted to do his own thing. He mentioned several times how he was tired of being used and abused. That he was bigger than bad boy itself. Somebody. And we ain't going to call no more names. Dangled a bogus contract in front of his face. So he wouldn't leave the company. How I know I was there. Another thing. Jay-Z wanted him out of the industry, period. So he could take over and be the biggest hip hop heart artist around. And I wonder who's the biggest hip hop artist today. It's all business, folks. And unfortunately, you as a fan, most of you won't understand. But it was all about the business. And the two billionaires have done what they seeded to do. Uncle Ron states here how P. Diddy offered him allegedly $30,000 to take out the Notorious B.I.G. Now, is that true? Only Uncle Ron and P. Diddy know that, but Uncle Ron has given information to the FBI to prove this information as just. That is a pretty big allegation to be throwing on someone, so proof is definitely needed. And allegedly, Uncle Ron has given this information to the FBI to back his claims. Uncle Ron also states in this part of the video that Jay-Z wanted to be the only rapper or the biggest rapper. Around the time of the Notorious B.I.G. passing away was the time of Jay-Z's rise. So he was coming out pretty much around the same time. And after the Notorious B.I.G. passed away, Jay-Z did become one of, if not the biggest hip hop artist in the world. So I'm not going to say that that's not true because I didn't get why he said that Jay-Z wanted B.I.G. to pass away as well because it's just like, well, why? How does this benefit you? I get how it benefits Diddy, which is why I believe Uncle Ron because Diddy has gained millions to billions of dollars on the Notorious B.I.G. He profited the most with B.I.G. passing away but with jay-z i was a little confused i'm like well why would jay-z want anything to happen to the notorious big them being around the same area from the same area uh they were friends why would he want that but again it's all business so jay-z wanting the notorious big wiped out so that he could be up next does make sense but again i have no proof of any of these things i am just going off of what the official uncle ron is saying 
let's keep going. I was offered thirty thousand dollars to perform a hit on Biggie Smalls. March first of nineteen ninety seven, I was approached by Diddy to perform a hit on one of his artists. Finding out that he wanted all the rights to all his catalogs. I turned him down because I also found out that very night that Biggie had plans of leaving Bad Boy. Biggie should have never been in California to promote an album with a broken fibula bone who can barely walk. To go to another studio when Diddy has his own studio in New York. Diddy is pure evil. He has a very nasty disposition. He treats everybody like crap. Every single employee he's ever had. He and his mother have looked down on them, belittled them, talked to them like they were the lowest scum on the earth. So he could always have his way. Amar, Muhammad, and Suge Knight, or Amir, they took the blame for something that was already getting ready to be in motion. It just happened at an earlier time because Uncle Ron states specific information in this last clip. He states the time, the day, and even the amount that was offered to him to take Biggie's life. Now, all that matter would allegedly P. Diddy. Again, I don't have any proof on what I'm saying. It's just from all of the information gathered, what I feel. I believe that Uncle Ron is telling the truth. I believe that multiple bodyguards were offered a significant amount of money to end Biggie's life. Even Gene Deal, a past bodyguard of P. Diddy, states the same thing, that he was offered a certain amount of money to end Biggie's life. They all turned the money down. And I think the main reason is, it's because they all liked Biggie. Biggie was a good man. He was a nice person. So I think that that was very hard for them, especially knowing P. Diddy's character and his demeanor and how evil of a man that he was. If they're already feeling like they're getting shortchanged and things like that, and they know the same thing is happening with Biggie, with him wanting to leave Bad Boy, then why would they want to hurt someone who they have so much in common with? So I believe that that's why the men turned it down. Another reason I believe and why I feel that P. Diddy set up Biggie is because Biggie was getting threatened again from California and he was getting threatened from people in New York City. But while he was in New York, there was really no one trying to act on that because Biggie was never hurt there. No one ever, you know, pow powed him or anything like that. But then as soon as he steps foot in California, which was the threats that was being sent to him because allegedly he was supposed to perform there, among other things. And the people in California wasn't having it because of the East Coast, West Coast beef battle rivalry, whatever you want to call it at the time. So Biggie told Diddy about all the threats that he had been receiving. Diddy told Biggie to come down to California for the performances, among other things. And while he was there, he ends up getting pow powed while with Diddy and nothing happens to Diddy because it was a setup. Diddy knew again about the threats. If you care about your artist, if Biggie's so close to you, if y'all are such good friends, why would you invite him to an area where people are threatening his life? No one was threatening P. Diddy's life. All of the threats were for Biggie. And it was very important that before the Ready to Die album came out, that something happened to Biggie because after that, that was it. 
Biggie was leaving Bad Boy. So it made all of the sense in the world that Diddy will want this done because again, he was the one profiting the most. People tried to say that Suge Knight, Pac and others had something to do with Biggie's passing and that is untrue because again, Diddy was getting the most out of what was happening, no different than Suge Knight. I believe they wanted Biggie to life to end in California so that they could blame it on people in California so that there would be no drawn connection to Diddy, no different than Suge Knight. That's why Pac passed away in Las Vegas because they didn't want a connection to California. And if you think about it again, Pac was Pop in New York City, but he ended up living. He did not die, but he was supposed to. Pac was not supposed to live so that they could blame it on the New Yorkers. But I digress. Again, I have no proof of these things besides speculation and the breadcrumbs that have been left behind. So I believe Uncle Ron, I do. Let's keep going. Of course, so many people have asked me why I waited 20 years or so long to come out and start talking and telling about the things that have happened in the industry. The most important reason why is I had children and I still have children, but at that point in time, they were young and my number one priority was protecting my children. I care less about the stuff that went on in the industry at that point in time. For as money, it was never about money and it's still not about money. I have money, but there's stories that have to be told. The truth needs to come out. A man lost his life. So much more went on. Physically have seen Diggy indulging in gay activities. I'm not bashing him directly bashing him I'm just telling the truth he knows like I know Gene knows like I know Boo knows like I know William knows bodyguards that were around him know see I had my own company so I didn't need him I didn't have to take his stuff the bull crap that came along with being around Diddy but see, when I start talking about Jay-Z and Beyonce, oh, some toes will curl for sure. But hey, the truth is the truth, whether you believe it or not. Yeah, I'm under investigation. So that's why I'm telling what I'm telling. Because now they have proof I have physically showed them proof. Things that I have witnessed, things that was told to me. And yeah, of course it's coming out. And I don't feel ashamed for saying what I've said. I've done what I've done. I said at the end of the day, I sleep good. A couple takeaways from this last clip from Uncle Ron. He states that he himself with his own eyes has witnessed Diddy in gay acts with other men. He knows for a fact that Diddy is gay, that he sleeps with men, that's not a secret. Everybody around them knows this, but they choose to keep their mouth shut, their lips sealed because they know what that means. It means you're 86, you're removed if you state these things. Bodyguards are very trusted people, meaning they're going to see and hear things that no one else will. Private conversations aren't private around bodyguards. Doing acts aren't private around bodyguards. They see and hear everything. Their job is to be at your side. And if they're not at your side, they are at your door. So Uncle Ron, again, he states, I know that Diddy's gay. Everyone around him knows it's no secret. Uncle Ron also states that the investigation that the FBI is conducting on P. Diddy and on Jay-Z, he is implemented. He is involved. 
Not only is he involved in the investigation, he's being investigated himself. So the FBI could state that there's criminal acts that Uncle Ron has committed himself while he's under investigation or because he's witnessed certain acts, it places him a part of set investigation. So this is very real. This is no joke. He is serious as a heart attack and he also has receipts to prove so. But let's keep going. He is not Jay-Z's child. Ty Ty Smith. Shout out to Beyonce and Blue Ivy. You know, I love Blue Ivy Carter, but she's been thrown in the mix as well. I don't feel that it is fair because she is a child and she has nothing to do with nothing, but Uncle Ron felt the need to throw her in there. He speaks of Ty Smith, whom is Jay-Z's best friend. They vacation together. He has a key to Jay-Z's homes. He's been on records. Jay-Z has shouted him out numerous of times. Again, they're best friends. So he is stating that allegedly Ty is Blue Ivy's biological father, not Jay-Z. I don't have much to say about that because Jay-Z and Blue Ivy are almost identical. They look a lot alike. So I don't know, but this is what Uncle Ron is stating. Let me know what you think in the comments. Do you think that Ty Smith is Blue Ivy's father or do you think that it is Jay-Z? I digress, moving right along. Let's get something straight. A lot of you won't understand, and it's not meant for you to understand. First of all, we're not talking negative about a child. We're just sharing facts. See, me being on the scene, I'm only telling my side of the story. I'm telling what I know. See, you as a fan, you are a financial accounting number. You are a decimal in this in industry. This child knows who she is. She understands the arrangement of her semen, of her existence, of her being here. She will be well taken care of if anything were to happen to her parents. She knows who her father is. She knows who her mother is because at the end of the day, their names are on that piece of paper that states they are the parents. Of course, she's saying, Uncle Ron, she's their twin. She looks exactly like him. What she's saying is a lie, no. You have family members that are in your family right now that look exactly like other family members and have no direct blood. As a fan, you will never accept truth. You will never know everything that goes on in the industry to become that power, that being it. that fame, that fortune, of course there's a price. There are sacrifices made, but it's an institution. Please, open your eyes. And if those Uncle Ron received a lot of backlash bringing up Blue Ivy, the people just weren't feeling it. The beehive was in full effect. So he came forward again to let everybody know that, hey, it's no disrespect. I'm just telling you what I'm saying. I'm not bashing Jay-Z. I'm not bashing Blue Ivy, I'm not even bashing Beyonce. I'm just stating what I've been told or what I know. But if you pay attention earlier, Uncle Ron was stating how people were saying like, why now? Why are you doing this now? Et cetera, et cetera. And he states that for his safety and for his children's safety, that he kept these things in so that he didn't have to worry about anything happening. Now, where there's smoke, there's fire. With Uncle Ron going around stating these allegations, of course, people are going to be upset. So upset that they put their hands on him. Uncle Ron got jumped. Let's get into that. Okay, guys, this is Uncle Ron. I'm in the hospital. 
Ah, I got some busted ribs. I got plenty of bruises. Oh, head's killing me. Oh, my leg may be busted. I got jumped. Oh, man, that was a terrible, terrible incident. I tried my best to fight back. I just couldn't do it. It's hard to breathe. But I promise you, I'm going to get those mosquitoes that beat me up. God help me. Y'all don't even worry about praying for me. Just kill the mosquitoes. I appreciate it. This is Uncle Ron. Viva la mosquitoes. After all of the exposing, allegedly recently, Uncle Ron had been jumped by a set of men. He calls them mosquitoes, but he's stating that, you know, these people, the bloodsuckers and whatnot, are the ones that did this to me, stating that Jay-Z or P. Diddy may have sent people after him to hurt him is what he feels. How do you guys feel? Do you think that Jay-Z or Diddy sent someone after Uncle Ron? Because it's not a coincidence that he wasn't getting jumped and now he comes out with this information and now he's getting jumped. What do you think? This is just the beginning. We will be back with everything that Uncle Ron has to say about the industry and exposing them. This is literally just the beginning. He said a lot. And not only has he spoke of Beyonce, Jay-Z, and Diddy, he spoke of a lot of other people too. And we're going to get into that, breaking it all down. I love you all. Until the next video, hit that like, hit that subscribe button, leave a comment. Let me know if you think Uncle Ron is clout chasing or do you think that Uncle Ron is telling the truth? Until then, bye. Fresh, 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 fresh